replayers, if you are replaying, you can still tap, tap, tap on the screen. You can follow me or you can follow me on Twitter and ask questions there, especially if you had a question, you didn't get a chance to ask it. So if you are new to me and you like the content, make sure you follow. If you're already following and say, you know what, I know somebody who could really use this advice or content, I uh, ask that you share, share with your Twitter followers, share with your um, Periscope followers, share with your Facebook friends, or just share with a friend, just one friend. Just mention them, say, hey, you know what, if you're not on Periscope or on Twitter, because by the way, you can watch this on Twitter, you can tell someone to watch this on Twitter. If you're not on, uh, this is the uh, knowledge and content that I like sharing with you guys. So, uh, if you are new to me, or if you just need to be reacquainted, my name is Joanna Zarek. I am doing um, Money Habits and Money Matters on Periscope. I do Money Habits every single day at 10 a.m. Central Time, seven days a week. And why do I do Money Habits every day? I woke up one day and I said, you know what, I'm going to do Periscope and I'm going to do Money Habits and I think I'm going to do it seven days a week. That was back in October. And why? Because I want you to develop a better Money Habits and you have to do it every day. You have to develop a habit to look after your money a little bit at a time every single day. So that's at 10 a.m. Central. Money Matters, it's twice a week at 5 o'clock Central on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, unless I'm on, you know, unless I have a day off. Uh, and today, what we're going to talk about, <clears throat> we are going to talk about your finances when you're a business owner. <clears throat> so this is uh, one of my favorite topics. I've been my own consulting business for the last six, six, almost going on seven years. And um, I started out, you know, I, I was a subcontractor. I started my own business. And so I have gone through a lot of conversations and a lot of activities that a business owner has to uh, take on. So I want to talk to you a little bit about how important it is to pay attention to your money when you are a business owner. Um, and I want to start with, and thank you guys for sharing uh, on Twitter, if you are a business owner. So first of all, the question is, are you a business owner? I think there's a lot of like, um, a lot of different terminologies that people use what, when you are in fact a business owner. And so here, let me just go through the list of who I think of when I think of as a business owner. And if you fit these categories, even if you don't think of yourself as a business owner, you are in fact a business owner. If you have a 1099 for from someone, when you think of like you're working for someone or, you know, if you're not a W-2 employee, if you're getting instead a 1099 form, you need to start thinking of yourself as a business owner because you are in the eyes of the law and in the eyes of the IRS, you are a business owner. Uh, so the uh, names for those are sometimes contractors or freelancers or people who do gigs, you know, you do projects um, and uh, and you're not fully employed by the person who benefits all the responsibilities that come with employment. When there's an employer, you are a business owner. You need to start thinking like a business owner. Um, a lot of people who provide professional services like myself. And I'll talk about, you know, the different things are solopreneurs. And what's a solopreneur? It's a person who runs a one, one, one man or one woman shop where you are in business long term to provide those uh, professional services usually. Uh, or if, you know, you do your own product uh, and you're like, yeah, you know what? I don't really need other people. I'm just going to go it alone. And maybe you hire out services, right? Maybe you have an accountant or you uh, hire a contractor, right? And so you are a solopreneur. Uh, then like what most people think of as a traditional business owner. And I think a lot of us think of as a business owner is someone who's in, uh, you know, who has a storefront, for example, right? Like, or who has a restaurant. Like we all, if you think of like, oh, think of businesses and we look around and this is the things we see, right? So a lot of times there's a lot of small business owners in our communities. And those are sometimes the traditional business owners. Um, to me, those are some of the most difficult businesses to run. And thank you for the hearts. Um, uh, what happens if you do have a W-2 job and <laughs> that's not the only source of income you have? Um, you don't need an office, you know, like you can. So here's the beauty of thing. Like we are all solopreneurs in the eyes of the law. Like everyone is entitled to a sole proprietorship uh, in the eyes of the IRS. Like you, if each state regulates what it is you're going to, um, what it is you need in terms of registration, but most states, so don't take my word for it, like look in your state's legislature. But if you're a solopreneur, so if you're a person who wants to sell your services to others uh, or a product or anything, you are 
are entitled to have a sole proprietorship. That is one of the simplest ways to set up a company, a business owner. And the way you set up a sole uh, proprietorship, you just decide. You're like, I'm going to have a sole proprietorship. What do you do next? And I'll, I'll go through that. But I'll, I'll jump I'll jump the gun a little bit. You're going to go to the uh, to the IRS.gov website and see where you can register for EIN, which is the Employer Identification Number. It is free. It is instant. You just say, I'm going to be a solo, uh, a solo, uh, sole proprietor. And you put your name in. Uh, because if you do business as something else other than your name, then the state usually requires that you file paperwork with them so that they can locate you. But if you're just using your name, like Joanna Zarek, sole proprietorship, easy. Uh, in 2009, I went on the <laughs> IRS.gov site, I went to sole proprietorship, I put my home address in, I put my, uh, I said I'm doing a sole proprietorship, I'm founding it this year, and I hit send, and it goes, boop, here's your employee identification number, it instantly generates that PDF, you want to save that PDF that it generates, I think like sometimes they send it to you in the mail, but you know, they're trying to be, uh, they're, they're trying to be more efficient, so uh, boom, you're in business. I recommend that everyone does it. Like the minute you start taking money other than W-2, you just have a solo pro sole proprietorship. Now you're like, well, what if I change my mind later? No big deal. You, you don't have to own just one company. You can own 10 companies, 20 companies, 30 companies, whatever. Uh, if you're trying to establish other entities, that's a process. Uh, it's not super complicated. And again, I'll talk through like, when should you like get advice? Uh, but a lot of it, you, you could do it yourself. And if you mess it up, like you just do it over. Like really people take it to like, People take it to be like super duper serious. Um, if you're not hiding anything and if you're not trying to cheat people out of money and if you're not lying to the government, the government's super forgiving. They're like, oh, you forgot, sorry. you know. But sole proprietorship in your own name uh, is just a given. Uh, just make sure you get your EIN and then you can fill out a Schedule C and you can say, you know, my business's name is my, your name. And then usually the state doesn't require you to do a do, doing business as application because you're not. You're doing business as yourself, so you're recognized. Um, so, but what I was saying is if you have a W-2, um, if you have a W-2, if you're an employee and uh, perhaps you have a side gig, right? the side hustle, like if you're in any entrepreneur communities or smart passive income or anything like that, you have probably heard about the side gig or the side hustle, or you maybe have um, have worked it, right? There's so many platforms that are now uh, becoming billion dollar companies and their sole purpose is to match the demand of labor market with the supply, right? So Uber, Uber's doesn't employ, right? Uber like transacts. So if you're driving for Uber, that's a side gig. That's a side hustle. By the way, if you're an Uber driver and you're not already like a licensed taxi driver, if you're just getting in your car and driving Uber, you are a business owner. <laughs> you're a business owner. You got to start thinking like one. You got to start acting like one. You got to know about the rules, right? Uh, other places of uh, income, uh, royalties, licensing, you know, people say like revenues, incomes, it makes it small, affiliate income, it could be small, but even like, and again, when it's small, people ignore it, right, but even if it's small, you're still a business owner, <laughs> so start thinking like one. Uh, franchise owners, right, if you buy a franchise, you are a business owner, right, like you are not an employee of the McDonald's corporation when you buy a McDonald's franchise, you are, you know, John Doe franchise owner, and it's on you to run as a profitable business. Um, and so basically, I want you to think of yourself as a business owner anytime an exchange of money happens and tax hasn't been collected. This is why we talk about this topic in Money Matters, because so many people um, don't really take uh, enough, like, don't, don't, they jump into it and they don't really think through all the financial implications and what they should do. And it just, what I'm really trying to emphasize is get, get your financial life straightened out, like pay more attention because if you want to be a business owner, if you are a business owner, it's so much more important. Like I feel there's more at stake because there's more rules and there's more advantages of being a business owner. So, uh, we start. We talked a little bit about this, and but what does it take to be a business owner? Again, each state. And this is again uh, U.S. U.S. centric. If you're joining outside of U.S., uh, I don't know the rules. Uh, in the U.S., each state regulates the licensing of businesses within their jurisdiction. So, um, where do you register your company? Well, a lot of people will register the business in the state that they're in, especially if you have a brick and mortar, there might be some more regulation about doing business. It, it, sometimes it's simpler. It may not be the best solution. Like that's why there are other places where people will uh, register uh, and there are rules about it. So you have to do a little bit of research or you're going to hire someone to do it for you. 
If you have money to burn, great. If not, do the legwork. Money or time, money or time. You need to make an investment. Uh, so I already talked about that we're all entitled to a sole proprietorship using our given legal, legal name. And you don't usually have to register in the state for to run a sole proprietorship. And with the federal government, you just IRS.gov. It's free. It's easy. Uh, you can get an employer identification number like that. It takes no long, like 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. If you ever want me to do like walk through a demo, but, uh, like go, I just Google it. And so EIN IRS, make sure it's the IRS.gov website, not someplace that's trying to sell you a $125 service where they go get it for you, where you can just do it for yourself in 5 minutes. Do it. It's, it doesn't really hurt. If you want to use a different name, and you're still a sole proprietorship, you need to file paperwork with your state. And sometimes it's like city regulation, so you need to look at look at look for, look stuff up uh, for DBA. So DBA stands for doing business as. So when you're doing business as an entity, like I can make up a name. I like say at some point I thought, hey, what if I did tax preparation services and I could call like you know your quick tax uh, preparation services. And if I advertise as the business, I would have to file paperwork with the state because if anybody had a complaint with my business, they would need to track me down. Like if I took all their money and like ran away. So. DBA. Uh, if you want to do business as an entity, and again, we're not getting into some of those nitty gritties, but I do want to touch upon those, is you need to apply and register in the state of your choosing. So um, entity is a little more complex. It costs a little bit more money to register. And uh, most people, again, do it where they live, although other states will let you register. The two popular states that people register in, everyone's heard of Delaware. Why Delaware? Uh, they are super pro uh, corporation, uh, the corporate veil, and so their rules are really good. But it costs a bunch of money to register in Delaware and you have to buy like the PO box because you have to like be in Delaware and you have to have an agent so uh, in, there is some cost you'll incur. The other state is Nevada. Nevada is really really good for uh, corporations as well. I attended a seminar where a guy talked about Nevada. It sounded legit. I'm myself incorporated in Illinois. Why? Because it's just not that complicated. I want to be in my state. It's just easier, less paperwork. Body -dotty. Um, they're like different levels of protection and different levels of complexity. The most popular, uh, uh, the most popular entities are uh, LLC, that's a limited liability company, LLP, limited liability partnership, and Inc., which is a corporation. And you cannot use those initials if you don't actually, uh, I mean, you can, everybody can make stuff up, but technically you cannot put ink behind your name if you're not incorporated. And incorporation is a process where you apply for it. Uh, yeah, if you're a limited liability company, that's, um, uh, yeah, oh, thank you for, for typing those in. Yeah, and INC, Inc. Um, so these are different, Inc, INC, uh, so corp incorporating. Um, so you become a, uh, you, a corporation, right? So you apply to have a corporation uh, founded in your state. So corporation is the highest level of protection. And so you, you, might, you might ask yourself, well, sole proprietor is so easy. Yep. Uh, why would people do uh, an entity? Well, entities protect your personal assets against any lawsuits that may be done against your company, right? So you're creating, uh, a, you're delineating between your personal assets uh, in case of a lawsuit and your uh, company is liable and you do contracts as your company, you're a representative and so a corporation, so I have a, a corporation and it's a, um, it's an S corporation. Uh, and so uh, again, this a topic for another day, if you guys ever want to cover it, because it has to do less with money matters, but it does business, and I love business. Um, so why would you do that? One is if you have a lot of personal assets to protect, definitely do that. The most common thing is when you have multiple owners, like if you're trying to partner with people, um, or if you're just like, you don't want to be a little bit savvy, um, where like I, I con contract with corporations, and I'd rather be a corporation contracting with corporations. So for me, being a Fortune 500 consultant, that made sense. Uh, there's a little bit more record keeping. Uh, you have to have more written. You have to have articles of incorporation, annual filing. Most people will hire someone to do it for them. Mm, not me. I do it myself because I like to keep my money and I like to learn. All right. So we're just getting into the meat of it. Okay. So the meat of why money matters and why financial stuff matters when you're a business owner. So the rule number one, if you are a business owner, if you're thinking about being a business owner, here's what I really want you to keep in mind. Uh, the rule number one of business is it's, uh, it's not your money. I know, I know. It's not your money. 
It belongs to the business. If you start with that level of thinking, you will, I, I guarantee you, you will do better long term if you start thinking of the money that your business is generating as not your money. Um, because it belongs to the business first and then to the government. <laughs> because you've been transacted with the government, right? Um, so a business is an entity and it has revenues and that is not your money. You do not get to keep the revenues that your business generates. This is super duper important, right? So if you are going to have even a sole proprietorship, no matter what, if you're transacting as a business and we went through the list of who you, who you may be, you got to open a business checking account. Um, find a free one. You do not need, if you're just starting out, uh, limit your costs. Find, look around, like see, like, is there a bank nearby that does, you know, some sort of uh, a very bare bones free account because you don't know where it's going. You know, if you already know your needs, why the government's because of the taxes <laughs> because revenue hasn't been taxed and so as a business owner as the person who profits from it you're gonna owe taxes right so you gotta think of all the tax liability that you're creating when you're getting revenue that's why it's kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek but you know in the u.s and i don't know everywhere else but the the income that you generate from a business is taxable um Well, what's taxable income is the profit you made, right? So if you buy a chocolate bar for a dollar and you resell it for two, that dollar that you made, that's profit, that's taxable, correct? So yeah, so it's the profit. So it's not the two dollars, it's not the revenue, right? Um, so revenue has to cover the cost, right? You gotta pay the guy who made the chocolate bar a dollar, right? And that's gonna be your cost, but your profit is gonna be the dollar and that's taxable. Unless you spend it on business expenses, right? So, uh, but if you just keep it for yourself, uh, as income, uh, you know, uh, as paycheck, uh, then that's taxable. So you can either spend that dollar on qualified business expenditures or you have to um, pay tax on it. So, um, and the entities that I talked to I talked about like, all flow through, so they flow through to the shareholders and or partners, uh, and if you're sole proprietorship, it's all, it's all yours, like the government doesn't see you as a separate entity, but I just want you to get in the mindset of uh, business ownership. So, uh, so find a free or super low cost business checking account and open it, deposit all your business checks, even if they're made into your name, right? If you're, you can have a business checking account that just has your name on it, this is Joanna Zierig, uh, and has, you know, whatever your name is, and deposit those checks checks into your business account. This just really establishes that accounting and it just make it will make your life easier. Like trust me on this, it will make your life easier. It'll make you know any things that if you're uh, in a long term that's just good discipline, right? Uh, the other one is to get a business credit card and the reason why you want to get a separate credit card for your business and it could be like it's just a personally backed um, then it is the company profit. Um, it just depends how you treat it, right? Like, so it's it's going to be yeah. So whatever tax you take out of it. So if you if you were if you were really disciplined and then you were like, this is my estimated tax account, or if you go through you know some service that the, that like then you get it in a paycheck that dollar and they'll take all the taxes out of it, then you get to keep whatever's left over. Uh, but if you kind of divide and say, look, I'm I'm going to have two checking accounts. One is my estimated tax uh, piggy bank, and my one is uh, my own. Then then you get to keep the 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 whatever's after tax, but it's still taxable as long as it's profit. And profit is all the difference between your revenues and expenses. That's all profit. Um, and expenses aren't just costs, right? So there's obviously the expenses associated with running a business. Um, so if you get a business credit card, you want to run all your expenses with this business card. Why? Because it's easier to track it. Um, yeah, out of the, the $1 profit from the chocolate bar sale. That's right. Uh, you would have to pay tax on that profit. Um, and that's usually at your, whatever your income tax rate, like, right? So marginal tax that we talk about a lot. Um, you know, if it's your first dollar, right? You have deduction. So if you're, if you just start a business and it's your only source of income and you only made like 15 grand in profit a year, you probably don't owe tax, but it's because of the tax laws, like the deductions that you can take for yourself, like, um, you know, whatever the first, the first uh, so much isn't, but, uh, if you're paying yourself, you may owe payroll, payroll taxes. Like if you use Schedule C, you, you're going to owe some payroll, payroll taxes. And so I do like big estimates. Um, like some people get really like, oh, I only want to pay, you know, pay as I go, uh, whatever I owe. And I just kind of round up and estimate and then I do the tax return and then I just like figure it out at the end, at the end of the year versus like having a very detailed ongoing um, tax calculation. 
because it's kind of a headache for me, uh, and that's just a personal preference. Um, so if you have a business card, you'll run all your, uh, you'll, you'll be able to track all the expenses associated with your business as well as. Uh, no, you can, um, you, so you, there is a, if you are applying for EIN, usually it'll ask you like to classify your product, uh, classify your business, um, but you can have the same entity selling whatever, you know, you can just call it, you can just call yourself general store sales, you know, or wholesaler uh, or whatever. You, you don't have to declare yourself um, in that, uh, in the sole proprietorship, right? Like if you have a, uh, if you're creating an entity and there are assets that are going to be that are going to belong to that corporation, that just need to be more specific. Uh, but in general, like you don't don't have to be like you don't have to be that declarative. Like you can have, uh, you may want to in the future separate your entities, but you can run a lot of things under one entity. Sometimes you like see people running things under one entity, and you're like it's weird, but it's not illegal. Uh, there's no rules against it. You don't have to declare yourself. The government will ask you like what business you're in because they're looking for some sort of ratios. Like they're typical businesses that make a certain margin and so uh, they want to classify it for their research and for their like databases but they're not like oh well you know you said you were a restaurant but now you're selling you know uh, Shakeology shakes you know like there's a lot of people who like sell products that are like um, multi multi-level marketers like they're all businesses they're not getting paid by the by the company that they're selling things from they need to like they're gonna need to like figure out all of that all of those expenditures and how much money they actually made after they bought all the product and sold it, you know, uh, I have an opinion, but uh, it's all good. Some people do really well, and some products are legitimate. Uh, but it's uh, I find it a harder business than it's worth for my personality. That's multi-level marketing. Okay, so if you do expenses and invoicing monthly, so uh, if you have an established business, so which is a steady source of re revenues, you may already like do a W-2 employee. Like if you're further in, you may yourself be a W-2 employee of the business, and you may have other employees. You know, so those are those are things. But for a lot of freelancers, uh, what I encourage is like to do your expenses, like figure out what you spend that month. Like if you do it month to month, you're not going to try to figure out at the end of the year, like where did I, you know, like where's my pile of receipts. So I encourage people to do like an expense uh, report and, and by expense report, it's like a fancy word, but I really mean like, and there's a lot of apps that help you do that, but like make an Excel spreadsheet, right? And write down like, and I use a calendar to help me like through my expenses and I use mint.com. Oh, sorry. I don't know why it freezes. Is it unfrozen? <laughs> um, so do your expenses every month and also like do your uh like figure out what your profit is and i call it invoicing uh but figure out like roughly and you don't have to be super precise but figure out what your profit was every month and are you keeping some you know so now your money is in your checking account and are you paying yourself right are you transferring money from your from your business checking account to your personal checking account that's kind of payment for services and again like sometimes you're a w-2 employee but if you're not like you may only get to keep some of the profit right so keep track of that uh just for yourself and then tell you like and give yourself like some discipline so either do it once uh, a month or twice a month or once a week where you say okay you know i covered all my expenses i projected my cash flow and so you know i i sold a thousand dollars worth of services i had three hundred dollars worth of expenses i want to keep a buffer of 200 so i'm going to pay myself 500 and maybe irregular or regular uh quarterly income taxes if this is where people who start a business, especially if they're freelancers, and then they start like doing tax return, and it's like I've seen some like I've seen some really disappointed people with their tax returns, where you do it and you're like you know you owe taxes because you had all of this like 1099 income and no one took taxes out and didn't pay estimated taxes. So when it comes to tax return and you're used to getting a tax refund, all of a sudden you're not getting a refund, you owe money, uh, and you're not ready for it. That's why I want you to think about it. it's not your money, right? Like get in this, the sense of like it's business money and uh, you really need to pay quarterly income taxes uh, on a schedule and figure it figure out how much and pay even you know if it's even it's a little bit um, if you have a side gig and your business profits are less than 10% of your overall household income and it's kind of a rule of thumb so do the math uh, you'll likely be okay with that quarterly payment but don't expect a refund you may have to pay April 15 but you may not have to pay as you go if it's less than 10% of your overall household income because the taxes that are being taken out are usually too much and again you're getting a refund usually then that but that income that you're generating from the side gig and if you report it that's gonna that's gonna sort of diminish your refund if you haven't been making quarterly tax payments 
So, uh, and make sure you are setting aside all non-income associated expenses. What do I mean by all non-income associated expenses? So for the chocolate bar, um, it depends. Uh, you don't, it, I mean, in a sole proprietorship, you don't. Because if you're purchasing something, you're going to put it in your tax return. You're just going to expense it. If it's a large asset, there is a place where you can depreciate it. Like, you, I think, forget what exactly it's called. It's a section of uh, the tax code. But you can just take the deduction the same year. If you uh, if you are incorporated, like if your corporation is going to uh, buy an asset, it depends how big it is, right? And the, so see if it's depreciable. But like a computer, uh, so I, I, I'll be the first one to know. I don't, to tell you, I don't know so much about assets in terms of my own experience, just from my client's experience, because my biggest asset is uh, my time and my computer. So every time I've bought a new computer because I have to upgrade or my iPhone, I just expense it, even though it goes over the, uh, the it's a depreciable asset. I can expense it in one year because it's under section, I think it's 175, or for, don't quote me on it. Uh, but when you're doing your taxes, it'll ask you and you can just put in the taxes. You don't have to declare the asset, like you don't have to do anything special and say this, this asset belongs to the business. You just need to do it in your expenses, uh, in your tax, it, when you're doing your taxes. So you would subtract that from your profit, by the way. So when you do an estimated taxes, again, put in your expense report. Like, so even though it's a depreciable asset, if it's small enough, and small, I'm saying like under five grand, right? Like when you're buying something, when you buy a building, like that's a whole different story. But if you're just buying some tool or something to do your business with, uh, just put in your expense report because it's going to qualify under the, uh, under the tax exceptions uh, for you to take that full uh, cost that year. Or you can depreciate it, but... You know, most people take it the same year, so the less headache. We don't have to do anything special like declare it. Uh, make sure you're setting aside for all non-income associated expenses or non-like revenue producing expenses. So when you, when the chocolate bar, when you're, uh, when you, when you made the profit of a dollar, you know, every time you make a profit, make sure you setting aside money for any fees that you pay, right? Like if you do have a, a corporation, you will have to file an annual report, right? So make sure you have the couple hundred bucks, whatever it is, you know, insurance, right? Like you have to buy insurance, all that stuff. So know what are the things that are in your line of business, what are you going to need and make sure you're setting aside that money. Okay, next one. Uh, so if you have a business and we talked about like a lot of people don't realize they have a business or like don't realize that that's part of their um, portfolio, right? Diversification portfolio of income is a business is make sure you start running it as one. So your aim is to become profitable, right? It's a key component of all businesses is be profitable, right? So this is why um, first you make sure you know what your source of revenue is going to be. So even before you start a business, right? That's People make these plans when they're like, you know, first I buy a building and then I buy equipment and then I make stuff and then I sell it. Um, yeah. No, first, like, find your customers, like, find the people who are going to buy your product, right? Or put or buy a similar product, right? Like, you need to do some legwork, some research, you need to make a plan. Um, the best thing, I, I, I'm very much like a lean, uh, minimum viable product person, where it's like, find the one person who's willing to pay for your product or your service, and get them to part with their money. Because don't ask people if they're going to buy your shit. Uh, because if they're friends or family, they're going to say yes. Uh, only listen to people who who push the hard cash across the table for whatever it is you're going to sell them. Uh, this is why I love places like, if you have a physical product that you need investment for, love places like Kickstarter, right? What a great way to validate if people actually want the whatever idea you came up with and what, at whatever price, right? So there is great places to test if, like, if you're going to go big, right, if people are going to do that. But for ser services or um, or even like, uh, you know, small product run, just just try to get, try to sell, like try to sell or find someone else who sells something. Like be friends to people in your industry. Don't see someone who does the same thing or similar as a oh, person I never should never talk to them because they're my competitor. Like you learn from them. I love my consulting friends, by the way. There's not enough consultants to go around the world to do the work that's required. And so, um, like I share all my all my information with my consulting friends. It's always only helped me. Um, so learn from someone who's already doing it. Learn about how much money they're making, profit wise. You know, find a mentor. Uh, make sure your cost of the product needs to significantly lower than the price. Don't just try to make a small margin. Make a big margin because of the other associated expenses. Um, yeah, we do. <laughs> uh, although I've never hired a consultant for myself, although like a coach, like people do hire coaches and stuff, people to help them. Uh, and I, I do like, I pay for courses and stuff. I'm always learning. I'm always improving. Um, 
And uh, yeah, and actually, yeah, we do. Like I subcontract. Like if I have a project and it's too big or I don't want it, I'll be like, oh, I'll take the project and I'll like have someone else work with me or work for me. Um, the time it takes uh, you to deliver services needs to be a heavy component of pricing. Like, please don't underprice. I see this all the time. People underprice, and it's a, it's terrible uh, because that's why their business won't work out. Um, and then if no one's buying at the prices you're selling, or if you're having trouble selling whatever it is you brought, you're either in the wrong market, so you're trying to sell to wrong people, you have a bad product, or the price is too high in regard to the value that you offer. So. Um, one thing to keep in mind is how long will it take you to become profitable, right? Bigger IRS kind of gives you three years to become profitable uh, or demonstrate efforts of becoming profitable. I think three to five, something like that. Uh, because if you're not profitable, if you are writing off a lot of business expenses and not making any money, they're like, it's a hobby. Like you can't travel places and be like, I'm a travel agent, so I'm scouting out locations and write it as a business expense for your travel business unless you're actually legitimately trying to like sell travel packages and like make money from some service related to it, right? Maybe a travel blog, something. Like you gotta try to make money and you gotta show that you're working really hard to make money before you write up those expenses. Um, my recommendation, again, I talked a little bit about it, profit day one or profit customer one, right? Like minimum viable product. Uh, if you look up AppSumo, uh, they have some great stuff, like great exercises to get you outside of your comfort zone to learn how to sell. Uh, anyone who says you've got to spend money to make money is typically trying to sell you something and trying to get you to spend money. So I understand that it takes investment to like grow a business, uh, but if you didn't make any money and you're just spending money, like I have opinions about that, obviously. Um, so you can spend, so what I think of is, is what, it's not that you are going to spend money to make money, you can spend the time or money, right? So if you want to accelerate it, if you're afraid, if you're like, can don't listen to my advice, and you want to pay for someone else to do something for it, to push the button for you because you like buying some sort of insurance, it's fine, it's your choice, it's money spent, right? Uh, you won't build a business by spending neither one, so you're going to have to either spend money or time. I'm, uh, my stance is time. I love to learn. Uh, I get something out of the process of learning and I like to take a, like a little risk and like see if I can, like, can I incorporate? Yes, I can. I can fill out this form. Uh, even if they like send me back another form, be like, you weren't supposed to fill out this two forms. Here's your money back. Just this form. I was like, okay, but I'm incorporated, right? At the end of the day, did I get the result I want? Uh, did I make a mistake? Yes, but like no big deal. Uh, so I'm a much more like learn from your mistakes and learn to do it and learn to overcome it uh, because uh, every time you do that, you learn something. Uh, like if you follow at all Gary V, I love Gary Vaynerchuk, at Gary V-E-E, -V -E -E. um, he loves the hustle, grind, and process. So I, I find him very inspiring for the stuff I'm doing. Actually, I'm, I'm here probably uh, largely because of Gary V because I'm like an older person with experience. He's like, if you have experience, you should get out there and share it with people. Um, business, back to business. Uh, financials of the business. You need to be on top of your profitability. Like day one, year five, year 20, you're growing your empire, like be on top of it. You need to be on top of it. Like know where money's coming from, how much is coming in and what's going out. Like you don't have to like know every dollar, but like you should be looking at a report every month at least. Um, you should know like where, what's up uh, financially. Every entrepreneur needs to know this, solopreneur, whatever. Like if it's just you and you don't have anybody working for you, but that's fine. Make a spreadsheet, figure it out, how much came in, how much went out, uh, know your business. Um, Two other things I want to talk about before I wrap up. Oh, whew, I'm going on a long time today. Um, thanks for the engagement and the questions. I love answering questions, uh, and I hope this is all helpful. Uh, the two other things I want to talk about if you're a business owner that I think I get kind of dismissed is one is if you are a business owner, you are responsible for your own retirement plan. This is good and bad. So it's bad because a lot of people don't take it into consideration. They're not like, oh, I'm funding my own pension or retirement plan, whatever. That's how you got to think about it. So you price it in. You got to 
pro you got to build it into your profit cycle that you're putting money towards retirement. This is what I love about business. There's some really great options, especially for a solopreneur. Again, that's what I am for your retirement plan. This individual 401k is just a terrific vehicle, uh, reduces your tax liabilities. Uh, really, you can, you can plow some good money into those plans. Uh, I think right now, uh, don't quote me on it, but I know it's around 50 some thousand dollars total. That's an employee and employer contribution. Now, you have to have profit for it because it's 25% of your profit as the employer contribution. But that is just some, this is a way, way nice vehicle. So if you're uh, established, you're a solopreneur, you're a freelancer, please, please, please figure out a retirement plan for yourself. I mean, you got to do it. You got to do it. You got to teach yourself. You got to learn. Ask me on Twitter. I will tell you how to do it. I've done it. IRA, 401k, um, get it done. Figure it out. You've got to build in retirement planning into your business ownership. And the last thing is building value. So what's the ultimate goal of starting a business is that you're trying to build value uh, and you're building value. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Take in. Um, building value is a leverage. Uh, so you're building value a couple different ways, right? You're creating something, you're, you're delivering servicing, you're delivering product to the market, you're figuring out the steps it takes to, to capture a profit. Uh, so you probably, you know, if you're, if you grow big enough, right? And, and my, my aim for, for my consulting is just to be one, because I don't like to manage people. I just work with other consultants as contractors. Uh, but most people will build like leverage. They will hire people, right? They'll hire workers and you can really like, over time, you develop systems and processes, you, you, you have a lot of know-how, so you're getting a lot of leverage out of your business. So you're creating uh, a profit that's higher than what you could do by yourself. So it's the this, the year-to-year -year profitability as the shareholder or the owner, right? So you're gonna, you gain value from that. The other thing that people sometimes forget or, or don't build towards is, a, is that if you create a a business that's sellable, right? It, can you actually sell what it is you've created and worked on very hard? And that usually comes, you know, that usually takes a long time, right? And we always get enamored with, you know, the startups that sell to another corporation. Uh, so there is the shorter cycle of sales, but most people build a business over their lifetime and then they create something of value and then they go to sell it to someone else. So that's, by the way, a different way in which you can, quote unquote, start a business. You can buy it. You can buy an existing business from someone else if you don't want to wanna go through the, all the steps. Now it's going to take a lot of money, right? Time or money, time or money. Uh, and that's really the two components of uh, growing business. Anyway, that's what I, that's all I got today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but if you're a business owner uh, or if you want to be a business owner or if you want to participate, and, and again, it's the number one thing that makes people wealthy in this country, right? The U.S. is well-known, uh, first-generation uh, millionaires are most likely business owners or have some business component. Um, then you can also give it to your children, right? A lot of people work in the family business uh, and pass wealth that well, that way uh, to the next generation. So what you can do is, um, you know, so I, I do really, I encourage people to think of how they can create a business income, a business stream. It doesn't have to be all in. It's not like quit your job and start a business. Um, I, uh, I do manage it by myself. So Vanguard is my trustee. So Vanguard offers, uh, if you go to the Vanguard site, vanguard.com, and you go to small business and you go into the individual 401k, uh, and they're really good with their customer service. Like you call them and you're like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to fill this out. So I filled it out. I set up my own 401k. Um, I filed a, whatever, like every five years you have to restate it. So I filed the forms myself. So I administered myself, you know, like, yeah, like it takes an extra half hour every year to administer myself because I, I don't want to pay somebody. I don't. I just want to fill out the form and send it in. And Vanguard lets you do that. So Vanguard's the trustee for my 401k. So I did. I set it up by myself uh, and I fill out all the paperwork and I fill it out like once every so often. There's some paperwork they need to they need to send in, you know, form 3383 or something like that. Um, so I encourage people to do that. And again, you can hire someone, but you're going to have to pay them. So uh you can do that. It's going to be an expense. Uh, but if you're just a, you know, solopreneur and you're making, you know, even in your profit, if you're making profit less than the, you know, in the seven figures. So if you're making six figures, I think it's worthwhile to do it yourself and administer yourself. Uh, it gives you confidence to, to be like, Hey, you know what? I can do it. Anyone can do it. Right? Like that's my, my big thing on all these money habits and money matters. I 
teach you guys things that I do want to have done or just do everything, you know, I manage it. And then the way you do it is you just capture more profit for yourself and more wealth building. It gives you more ability to do that and to understand it and then to contribute to it. Like, I don't have to like, I just go online, you know, and I do my online contribution. So, uh, you know, set up with a bank and then I can time it when, you know, with the, with the cash flow. So, um, all right, I got to run. Um, but thank you everybody for joining and thank you for asking the questions. Oh, really? Bye bye. Um, so, uh, it, it, it doesn't bother me. Um, I like sharing my, my knowledge, my approach and my kind of do it yourself, um, do it yourself money management uh, process. And uh, again, when you're a business owner, it's so much more important. I really do want you guys to get more educated, empowered to, um, to, to think about your financial future and how you're going to manage it. Um, so I really do. Um, but I do appreciate the questions uh, because I, I feel like sometimes I talk about things that I'm like, I don't even know what people don't know, right? Because I've been doing going through the process. I'm always happy to answer questions. You can find me on Twitter. Um, you know, if you're going through a process and you're like, you know what, Joanna talked about sending this up, like I'm finding it hard. Uh, yeah, and if you find something hard, like hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Snapchat. You can be like, hey, I'm filling out this form. What would you do? I'll snap back and tell you what I would do or what you should do or who you call uh, that you don't, you know, that's part of the customer service or whatever services you're using. So um, good luck to everybody. And, uh, and thank you for joining and thank you for sharing and thank you for the hearts and the engagement. I really enjoy talking about this and, uh, and doing my money matters. Uh, so I'll catch you on Friday. I'm not sure what topic I'm going to do on Friday for money matters. And of course, um, money habits every day. And then I'm also developing spreadsheets on Google spreadsheets. I'm going to start sharing with people just free that you can use. Uh, you can use my expertise in both spreadsheets and money management. I can be like, here's how you fill it out. And now you project it. So, so stay tuned in the next couple of weeks. I'm for sure. I have one right now for the cash flow for 2016. I'm going to be putting them out on Twitter, the links on Twitter. So please follow me on Twitter to get the links uh, for the uh, spreadsheets. And again, that's where you can ask me questions. Yeah, no, I'm super excited. I'm super psyched about putting these spreadsheets together and uh, and giving them on, on uh, Google spreadsheets, which is free for everybody because not everybody owns Excel. That's a it can be an expensive software. So all right, uh, folks, got to run. Talk to you later.